So a stock hits your scanner. The setup is perfect. You want to take the trade. You get your final signal. Whoa, the trade's $260 per share. What do you do? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, Jimmy here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, consider subscribing. So today I wanna to talk about really expensive stocks or stocks that are higher priced than you've ever traded before. That happened to me today. I took a second and thought about it and then I realized I already had a plan in place for this exact situation. So I wanna share that with you. I wanna talk about my entries and exits today. I also wanna know how you guys did. So let's jump into it. All right, I've got a chart up here on GDI, Gardner, Denver. And I wanna start off with this one. I know in the intro I talked about a large price stock and I'm gonna show that to you here in just a minute. But I wanna show you my first trade. I took two trades today. Both were green, both were really nice and I cut both of them just a hair early. So I'm working on the discipline with that. They both went the distance. I added them to my spreadsheet. I'll show that to you here in a little bit. But first, let's dive into this one. I have the three minute chart up on GDI. And as you can see this morning, GDI broke out and just was rolling. Grind, grind, grind. Got up into this $35, $36 area. And I think we had a little bit of uh, whole dollar overhead resistance playing in. I talked about this topic in a, in a video a while back about having whole dollar and half dollar or resistance and support levels. Anytime you hit a whole dollar or a half dollar, it's uncanny how often it creates a little bit of hang up in that stock price. And sometimes it's really frustrating because for no other reason, other than it being a half dollar or a whole dollar, you might get a little bounce when you were wanting to push right through that price action. So something to be aware of. So today it came up, got up close to $36. And then we got this nice strong candle that pushed down through the nine daily SMA on my chart. And I was watching this down here on the RSI. You can see this red band through here. That indicates that this stock was indeed above an RSI level of 70, meaning that this stock was currently overbought and more than likely at some point was gonna have a pullback or move in a wave in the short direction. So when I saw this strong candle come through, the first thing I wanna do is check the volume. And you can see, if I drag this up a little bit, you can see this volume candle right here came in right after this one. So the fact that this green candle or this green volume bar was smaller tells me that this buying pressure to push it higher maybe had fizzled out a little bit because it was so small compared to this one. This candle came in, volume looked really good, so after that was in place, I decided the open of the next candle, I would take it short. So I went ahead and did that. And if we look at the spreadsheet, you can see GDI. I had, a, I had an ATR of 20 cents where I was gonna roughly place my stop. And then I was gonna look to take 1.2%, so right around 24 cents profit. And you can see overall on this GDI trade, it did not go two to one but it did go 1.5 to one and it did go one to one. Now I took it just shy of one to one because it paused and gave me a little anxiety in a certain area and I got to work on holding through my 1.2, but I got real close to 1.1. So flipping back over here, you can see my entry on this right here at the open and then which was going to be right around 35.66 and I was looking for about 20 cents, which would have been 46. And you can see clearly, we got down to a low of 28. So it clearly worked really well. This area in here, seeing this doji, just made me a little bit nervous about the price action. So took that trade for a $35.50 profit, which was great. Um, definitely not upset about that. And then watched it a little longer to see if it would get back up above 70. It never did. So I just moved on and that, is when I found Shopify. So this was a first for me. I have never traded a stock in this price range. So this was brand new, and this is what I was talking about in the intro today. I'm seeing Shopify push up, work its way, sort of consolidate back in, but not necessarily go to the downside, no big volume spikes, keeps grinding up, 
and then I get this big vol this big candle that comes in accompanied by a big volume candle, big volume spike. And I said, okay, I'll go ahead and take that on the open of the next candle. And then I realized I'm trading in the upper 150s and I thought, wait, 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 this stock's really expensive. What should my shares be? How should this work? And then I realized, I trade appropriately for any side stock, and I thought that's something important, and I should share that with all of you out there. This is something, I actually got a question, a comment yesterday on my video, and it was a great question, and I wanna go ahead and shed some light on that. And the question was, how do I decide on my share size? This person pointed out that I bought, uh, I took an 89 share position, I think it was the other day, and he said that seems very specific, why do you do that? So I wanted to, share that for you right now. So what I would do is on this stock and how I did it on this stock, you can see I took 43 shares, which is kind of an odd amount, but I went ahead and took that I wanted to risk $50. So I didn't want to lose more than $50. So I had to decide when this candle was about to close, what's my stop going to be? And I roughly use the, uh, the ATR on these. So if I look at this crossing candle, I see the ATR is $1.15. So I'm gonna say, okay, if my stop is $1.15, that's what I'm risking. So I take $50 and I divide that by my 115 on the ATR, and that gives my share size. And I'll bring up a calculator real quick. And let's just do it right here. So I wanna risk $50 divided by the $1.15, which came from the ATR right here, if I hover that candle, you look down there, you see a dollar fifteen. So that was my stop loss. So when I divide fifty dollars by a dollar fifteen stop, I get forty three shares. And that's how I decide on my position size. Because to just jump into a trade and say, okay, I usually like to take five hundred shares. Well, five hundred shares on a stock like Shopify versus a stock like Twitter totally two totally different things you could lose a lot of money really quickly with 500 shares trading a stock like Shopify but if you scale it to whatever your risk is you can guarantee that you will not lose more than fifty dollars on any trade you take if you just decide ahead of time what your stop loss is going to be and this is part of the plan if you put together a nice plan before you take the trade you'll know your risk you'll know your stop loss you divide those two and you come up with your share size. So again, I took my, uh, my overall risk, which was $50. I divided it by my stop loss, which was gonna be $1.15, and that gave me 43 shares. So at the open of this candle, I took 43 shares short. Stop loss was at 115, which was right about here. Got this push up, roll over, down, exited. It worked perfectly. You can see right here, Shopify, Two to one, 1 1.5 to one, and one to one. It was winners on all three risk to reward ratios. So this strategy I've been working um, with using the RSI, I've got about 100% right now on the one to one and uh, doing 83% on 1.5 to one and even almost 67% on two to one. So that's been working pretty well so far. But that's so important to address is position sizing when you're trying to decide how to trade uh, a lower price stock versus a larger price stock because you want to be able to take a trade on you know a cheaper stock and then be able to flip your chart because something hits your scanner and jump right into something bigger like a Tesla or a Shopify something like that and um, or even a Google if you want and you know if you want to be able to do that you got to be able to quickly make do a calculation so you can scale your share size but so that you don't get in over your head so great question I appreciate that keep the questions coming so these are the only two trades that I took today. It was just the two trades, uh, GDI and Shopify, and both green trades. Everything went really, really well. Didn't see anything else. 10 o'clock my time hit, which is mountain standard, and I just, nothing was happening. It just really got slow. So I took that as my sign to call it a day. Took um, about $80, $85 in profit today, and then just wrapped it up. So I wanna know how you guys did today. Comment below, let me know. Tell me how you calculate your share share size. How do you jump in? Do you 
Do you have a standard set that you use? Do you always take 100 shares? Do you always take 500 shares? Um, do you use the price of the stock to even factor in to when you take your share size? But great question from the person that commented yesterday. So thank you again for that. I showed you the spreadsheet. So things are looking good here. We've had a bunch of winners recently. It's been really nice. And I'm excited to move into Friday and hopefully finish this with a fully green week. That would be a great way to go. So anyway, thank you for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give me that thumbs up. Appreciate you stopping by. We'll be back at it tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Thanks.